The first reading today is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will, he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. The second reading is Matthew 5, 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. God bless the reading and hearing of this word. Thank you so much, Katrina, for reading. And if I'm a bit emotional, I uh, ask for your understanding and apologies. In the next couple of weeks, we are going on a holy road trip. Today is number one out of a four-week series. Today we're going to the mountains, and then next week we're going to the seas and the desert and the cities. I love the mountains. And I want to share something with you. You see up right there, the picture. Isn't it beautiful? There was a time BK, before kids. <laughs> I was paragliding in the Alps. What is paragliding? You run down the hill as fast as you can, and as you are running down that hill, you sweep your arms like that, and the parachute is above you, and then you just sit down and enjoy the view. And with your arms, you see the different strings. You can direct the way you are going to the right or to the left. And you feel as light as a feather and just taking it all in. And you feel like being in paradise. And you see what you have never seen before. You feel as close to the birds you have ever felt before, as close as flying without an engine. <sighs> can you just feel it? You're just up there in the mountains, and the air just carries you, and you forget everything underneath you or behind you. You are just there. No wonder people in ancient time really thought the mountains is where you feel close to God, because this is really what a God-like experience it was, flying and sitting and just, oh, I can still smell the mountain air in Switzerland. So, in biblical times, people fought close to God in the mountains, and I can get that. Remember Moses and the Ten Commandments? Mount Sinai. And other mountains as well, Mount Arafat. Arafat it's where <clears throat> Noah's Ark. Or, I'm thinking of Jesus. Jesus was in the mountains, not many, many mountains, not like mountain climbing, but he was there, I'm thinking about when he was, um, the transfiguration was on top of the mountain. Mount Olives, when he was crying just before the crucifixion, on a mountain. So, today we are going on the mountain. The psalm which I chose for today is Psalm 121, which is in your bulletin and Katrina read it to us. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven 
and earth. Maybe many of you might have memorized it, maybe in Catholic school or so on. It's a very, very familiar um, psalm. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth and everything in it. And interesting, if you look back to the psalm, six times is a verb used in Hebrew, somer, which is similar to keep, to protect, to watch, to hold you, hold you close, because that is what God promises. Does it therefore mean we all are living in a world of chocolate ice cream, unicorns, and butterflies? That would be nice, Maddie, wouldn't it? I'm sorry, it's not life that I know of. Yes, you will stub your toe. You might get COVID or other things going wrong in your life. However, I believe what Eugene Peterson, who translated the Bible, or not translated, who transcribed or modernized the Bible in the message, you, maybe some of you have read it, or which the gift which we give to our high school students. Eugene Peterson says, Psalm 121 promises that nothing will have evil power over us, separating us from God's purpose in us. Yes, there is evil, I'm not denying it, but nothing has the power to separate us from God's love in Christ. And that is <clears throat> what I believe the God experience is all about. Here in central Ohio, where can we have an experience like that? Hmm. Well, maybe on a Sunday morning. Because in ancient times, in biblical times, worship, worship in the temple, worship in Jerusalem, was always going up like a mountain. Jerusalem is built on a hill. So it's not literally, not only literally climbing up the mountain to worship at the temple, but also spiritually because you felt closer to God. So on a Sunday morning, maybe you have climbed up a mountain. I do not know, and it's a pretty flat Ohio, but maybe this is your mountaintop experience of the week. Maybe it is the music. Maybe it is the fellowship of believers. Maybe it is the place and the people where you know you can just be. You don't have to perform. You don't have to have a certain role to play. You can just be and loved by God and by others and feel that love wrapped around you. Maybe. Maybe worship could be our mountaintop experience. And this is where I believe our New Testament text comes in. Jesus' <clears throat> Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount is two chapters long immediately after Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the desert. Goes up on the mountain. Probably, huh? not only because he can see better, because also he can be seen better, and also can hear better, be heard better of what's going on. We all know it's easier to go down and to, to speak down than being up and from the, from the valley speaking up. So no wonder. Two chapters long, Sermon on the Mount, in the Gospel of Matthew, very important Beatitudes, which Katrina read to us. And there's also wonderful, wonderful readings in it. Sermon on the Mount. And then Luke is called Sermon on the Plain. Very, very similar. Here, um, it's, if you just go through it, you went up on the mountain and he blessed the people. But before that, before we go into the Beatitudes, I'm going to ask you, if you were paragliding, just imagine, you are paragliding right now over west of all. What would you see? Maybe you see Hoover Reservoir. Maybe you see the steeple of the church not far from Hoover Reservoir. Maybe you see your own neighborhood from down. Because if you're looking down, you see more than if you were just standing on the ground. But maybe you also see 
that a third of the children going to Westerville City Schools are on reduced or free lunches. Maybe you also see that the poverty rate amongst African Americans is double as high as amongst whites, 10%. Maybe you also see, if you're looking a little bit further, because you have a beautiful bird's eye view, that the homicide rate in Columbus increased 60% according to 10TV just last year. What do you see when you're looking down on our community? What do you see? What do you observe? What do you, where do you feel God in those moments? Going back to the scripture reading, Jesus said, blessed are, nine times in nine verses, he blesses people. When we think of blessings, we a lot of times associate blessings with material gifts. I am so blessed because I won the lottery. I am so blessed because I got a promotion at work. I am so blessed because. No, that is not what the biblical kind of blessings are. If you look at the Beatitudes in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, hunger, the go on and on and on, people who would we really not associate with being blessed. Why are they being blessed? The word used, makarios, is very similar to the baruch in the Old Testament, being in a close, intimate relationship with God. These are the people Jesus blesses. No matter how your pocket looks like, as empty as this or as filled with gold and silver as with other people. Blessed are those who are in close relationship to God and therefore live out that close relationship in love to God and to their neighbors as well. And I would like to share with you a quote from one of my favorite authors, Kate Bolum. If you can say, God is here, we are loved, it is enough. It is a blessing in itself. If you feel wherever you are that God is here, we are loved, it is enough, then you feel God's blessings here, why not only in this building while we are gathering, but wherever you go. Kids going to school this week as well as you going to work and maybe there's a big catastrophic things going on, I don't know. Thank you for the last 20 years of blessings. We have been on mountain dogs, and we have shared valleys of sorrows. It has been a blessing, because I truly feel that we can say together with Kate, God is here, we are loved, it is enough. And that let be our mantra going forward into this week, into this month, knowing that God is here, we are loved, it is enough. Then may this blessing be with you on top of a mountain and in the bottom of the valley, wherever you are.